Hi, welcome to uh, another series in the Better Half series. And um, I'm here today again with my own Better Half, uh, Bola. And we really love to share our heart about a few things that have to do with how you manage your relationship, especially uh, your marriage. And we've been dealing with the A, B, C of relationships. And uh, Bola, you, you, you want to give us a review? We've done A and B. Yes, A and B. Yeah. A was authenticity and B was belief systems. Authenticity simply speaks about how it's critical for you in any relationship that you want to succeed in to bring your full self, not to hide parts of yourself away. And what um, fuels or waters authenticity is trust and safety. So we need to be able to give and receive trust optimally and we need to be able to, um, you know, provide safe spaces for each other to be real, to be authentic, and to show who we are. Um, belief system, we talked about how um, your value system, you know, will determine how like well our how relationship, exactly. And um, when we understand that there's a reason why you do the things you do, there is an operating system, you know, that defines why I do the things I do, why I say the things I say, you know, it helps me to understand what filters are in place. And um, I guess we just really landed the conversation on how critical it is to understand the belief system, first of all, that you're bringing into the relationship, and then to understand the belief system that your mm. um, spouse is bringing into the relationship so that you're able to work together and agree. So the balance of, of mindset, um, belief systems, and all that can make or my relationship absolutely yeah uh, so whether it's a, um, a normal relationship a business partnership you mean a romantic relationship yeah whether it's a romantic relationship a business partnership or even a marriage between siblings you'll even be shocked relationship how, between siblings yes. yeah, yeah the our biases play out heavily and when that happens uh, it's it's such i mean it's certain that we will, there will be unusual clashes Absolutely. if we're not balancing out those biases and querying certain things mm -hmm. and asking ourselves questions where is this belief system coming from mm -hmm. yeah well, for siblings if we share it from our parents then we may have the same belief system and we can move on but when you have different parents mm -hmm. and you then come with uh, this belief system that is stretching the relationship and you know really stressing it out you need to slow down and ask the right question so we progress uh, by talking about the C Yes. of relationship, which is communication. 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 So let's talk about communication. Yeah, so, and we will try to communicate as well. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> and I'll see if you, if you, I mean, if our own communication is also getting better. Yeah, so, because I know in the early days of our marriage, <laughs> communication was a big deal. And it was, it stressed us out a bit, you know, led to a few conflicts here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing that everyone should know that we have learned mm -hmm. is that communication is the oxygen of relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I find that even when you're dealing with issues with your authenticity and your belief systems, if you will, if you will do well with communication and invest time, energy, effort in really, make, really making your communication robust and full, it will have a trigger on harmonizing your yeah. view of each other yeah. and bringing your belief systems into alignment. Yeah, truth is that actually that how you balance belief systems is through open communication. Yeah, uh, like we say that in real intimacy, you can use, you can say the, it in a different way. Into me, you see. It's like looking into the mirror. What do you see? You see the image of yourself. And that authentic self that we need to bring into a relationship, we actually bring it in, you know, seriously as we communicate properly. Yeah. yeah. And as we hold no holds bar conversations mm -hmm. where we can really talk, you know, from our heart. So open communication is very key. Mm -hmm. It's like fresh hair. It's like when you go into a green place, yeah. like you go into, you know, very rural places. We say, the hair there is clean, is clean. Or and it smells it, clean. yeah it smells clean Gosh. everything is yeah so when you communicate openly that's the level of oxygen that you're getting 
And it's interesting, I mean, you use that analogy about a garden and fresh air, because the truth is, if you've ever been in an environment where there was some foulness in the air, maybe there was, you know, a dead animal or a dead tree, you know, the, the foulness of decay can stink up a place. But if you can take the foulness out and allow for fresh air, some detergent, some cleaning agent, within a short time, you'll find that there can be a freshness you know, to the atmosphere. And that analogy works absolutely um, in a relationship as well. There may have been some pain, some hurt, you know, something that can aggravate the relationship. But if we'll invest in having real conversations, robust conversations, yeah, and just yeah. allow the dialogue to continue, um, it, as difficult as it may be at the start, it will be an instrument of healing and, okay. you know. So, so, so Bola, look, look at it this way. Uh, there are a few things I want us to discuss, but before we get into that, let's segue a little bit. What are the things that hinder open communication? Hmm. I mean, some of them we've already discussed in earlier conversations. Trust. I mean, trust is a big one. If I cannot trust, you know, that you will honor what I'm saying to you or value or validate in some cases what I'm saying to you, it's difficult for me to continue, you know, to be vulnerable. Yeah, um, so it's it's interrelated, you know. Um, the more authentic I feel I can be with you, the more open I am with my communication. So, so with trust you. is a big deal. Trust is a big obviously, deal. Obviously, when it uh, comes to things that hinder open communication. But I think um, hurts and um, you know and animosity and all that is also a big deal because Absolutely. We, we live in a time where um, a lot of couples now find it so easy to keep malice with each other. And they feel like we can continue to sweep the problem under the carpet, uh, it, 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 just avoid each other. Mm -hmm. And some people also say it's a good coping mechanism mm -hmm. where if you keep avoiding each other, you're not talking and all that, at least we're not fighting. It's, I mean, it's instinct. We're all built to run away from pain. Yeah. You know, we, we, that, that's our instinctive response. Um, but when we want to build a relationship, what we then need to do is to short circuit that nat natural inclination mm -hmm. and insist that look there's a better way there's a better way even though i should i should run away from the pain i'm going to go towards it instead but this time with the mindset that you know there can be something good come out of this hurtful situation all right so uh open communication can be hindered because of lack of trust mm -hmm hurts and yeah. animosity and all that mm -hmm. um, there are many other things that will get in, that, in the way in sometimes the just come um, language i may not understand your language and when i say language i'm not just talking about okay we both speak english or we both speak french we can be speaking english to each other and we're still not speaking the same language yep yeah that's 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 true uh, so there are many things that will end that open communication. And if right now you're struggling with communication in your marriage or business partnership or, you know, work relationship, I think you should ask the right question. What are we really dealing with? What is hindering open communication? Is it trust? Am I bitter? Am I angry? Because when you are bitter or angry and all that, you don't want to talk to that person. And the more time goes over that, the more you have gaps in your relationship because there are things that have happened over time while you're keeping quiet or you're managing information that will haunt your relationship later in the future because it creates gaps. So that's why, for instance, in the, in the Bible, it says, be angry but do not sin and let not the sun go down on your wrath. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? It means you have the right to your emotion, but don't turn that to malice. I'm angry, I can't talk right now. Tell your spouse, tell your partner, as the case may be, I I'm, I'm really not ready for a talk right now, but maybe tomorrow morning, maybe when we get back from work in the evening, or maybe over the weekend, so that they can also, the person can hold you accountable to say, look, you said we'll address this issue over the weekend. Um, now, your anger should have dissipated and you should be willing to talk. The problem most of the time, especially for certain temperament, like, my better half here is that when uh, they've waited over a period of time, the anger goes off, but they don't want to talk about it again. It does, they just feel the issue is resolved. I always insist in our relationship. I know you're no longer angry. I know 
you feel better about the situation but let's still talk about it so that we don't get back there in the future because for me talking about it is how i resolve issues and some people feel you can resolve issues without talking about it but the power of communication is such that it, it helps you to learn something from the situation when there has been open communication now let's dig a little bit more into open communication uh, the place of clarity uh, the place of oneness of purpose in communication uh, let's deal with oneness of purpose communication is very powerful if we will be on the same pathway uh, so talk about the place of working the part of purpose in a relationship and how key communication is to that um so if, we're going to, if I'm going to say anything at all about that topic, um, I would just say that um, I think it's important to settle some things very early in your relationship, in your work relationship. Even when we're not speaking verbally, what do we want to make sure we're communicating to each other? If we can bring ourselves to that place where we know these are our irreducible minimums, even when we're angry at each other and we feel like, look, you know, ugh, you know, <laughs> Can we insist that there will be a basic minimum, a line that we will not cross? So very early when we um, began to talk about marriage, um, one of the agreements we had was that we will never call each other names. So regardless of how much else communication is going on, um, whether through words, whether through a cold shoulder here or there. Or the kind of atmosphere. The kind of communication we had outlawed in our relationship is the kind that speaks um, abusive words, curses to each yeah. other. We had said, this is a no-no. And because we had already determined for ourselves that, look, we will not enter that space, it, 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 it helped us to align and realign. Even when, even when we struggled, with the exact words to use. We knew that there's some territory we'll not even wander into. Yeah. Yeah. So when you've already aligned certain things early from the get go, I think what it does for you is it just helps you to see better. Even when you're trying to adjust, you know, your lens and okay, we're not quite clear on what, you know, we're trying to communicate. The fact that you've already determined some things from the beginning. It kind of sets the tone, I think, and it helps yeah, you to align yeah. better. Yeah, I agree with you, and it's been a lifesaver in our own relationship, uh, notwithstanding how the atmosphere, you know, <laughs> Let me make gets. you laugh. <laughs> so when we were going to have our first child, right, we were in the hospital, and prior to that time, I had dragged him along with me to the one prenatal class that he agreed to come with me for. And it was the class on birthing. <laughs> you can imagine. They showed my husband a video, a birthing video. And he came home with me that day very sob. I was wondering what was playing on his mind. And he said, sweetheart, I will follow you. I will go with you into the birthing room. But you have to make me one promise. Please don't abuse me. <laughs> please. He said, please don't abuse me. <laughs> I can never forget. I tried. Don't ask me if I abused him during the birthing. Eventually, I tried. I tried. I said, Holy no. Ghost, help me. You, didn't, you, didn't abuse, you, didn't abuse <laughs> you know, yeah, in that but... video, we showed so many, you know, Scenarios. mothers where that are cursing their husband for putting them through those kind of pain. And uh, because we have outlawed abusive words and curse words in our, in our relationship, I had to beg her, don't use that as an opportunity to be abusing me. <laughs> because we are in pain, you know, you wanted to give birth and all that. So that, that was good. It was good that you, you remember that. But you see, notwithstanding the kind of situation that you find yourself, we've counseled so many couples where a, 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 one spouse will say, look, uh, um, I just cannot forget. Yeah. The kind of word you used. Yeah. yeah. How you spoke to me. Words can be acidic as in toxic. And very deep. Yeah, and it hits deep into the fabric of people's heart. Mm -hmm. And that once spoken, you, you may not be able to recall. You know, you can recall an email, but you may not be able to recall what that you, you, you've spoken out. And that's why we need to be careful uh, when it comes to communication in our relationship and the kind of words that we allow to come out of our mouth. The yeah. balance to it, of course, is that while you need to be very... Um, empathetic you know about the words you do use on your spouse you can't be so careful that you refuse to touch on real issues 
right? Yeah. So there's a balance to it. Well, language matters. Language matters. Yeah. The way you communicate yeah. matters. Yeah. You know, you square your shoulder somehow and you don't know what it's saying because you're not seeing it. Yeah. But you need to be mindful of it. So that, that takes us, as we, as we start to wrap up, that takes us to elements of communication. You know, we say in communication, uh, the word that you use is not as important sometimes as your tonality, your tone the of voice, way you say and, it. and your body language, mm -hmm. which is they communicate more. The percentage, as in, of communication that body language and tonality takes is way higher than the word. Like I can tell you now, eh, as we're here, that you... <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> you, know, <Right. laughs> you know, I can, I can, I can tell you that, um, uh, I can say something like, you, you look good. Yeah. And I can say, you look good. Yeah, they yeah. mean different things. They mean different things. They mean different yeah. And I can I can say something smiling and I can say something, you know, boning and not smiling and all that. So that 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 we Subtleties just need to be yeah, to our communication. We, we need to be careful about how we allow things to play out when it comes to our body language, our tone of voice, you know, and all that in communication. There are things you will say. That your spouse will read a different meaning to it. It can take your relationship in the wrong direction. And we can spend the next two, three, or four weeks trying to recalibrate. Uh, rather than going that route, I think it's better that you are careful about how you communicate. So clarity in communication yeah. is very important and the use of words. Yeah. But much more than that, yeah. the tone of voice yeah. and the body language. Yeah. One 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 fail proof method I will give you for communication is let the Holy Spirit temper temper your communication. There are times where there's really nothing wrong with what you said, but you just feel the Holy Spirit tell you, you know what, just go, go now and go and remediate. Go now, go and apologize. And the truth is I've had those conversations with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, I said nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. It doesn't look bad to me, but you can trust the Holy Spirit. You can trust that he knows what your spouse or your partner is pulling out of that conversation you didn't intend to put out there. So critical in the subject of communication, let the Holy Spirit help you. Let him help you. Let him help you to interpret your language. Let him help you, you know, just to interject when you need to and to slow down, mellow down, you know, when um, the occasion warrants. So the last thing I, I want to say as we wrap this up is also the power of listening in communication. Yeah, I also learned this in marriage and in some in some hard way uh, because earlier on you just feel you know a lot and you know you interrupt you you know you want to say a lot. But I realized that as I grew older in marriage that uh, listening is part of communication because somebody it's wants to big. it's a big part of communication. Yeah, somebody wants to be sure that you are hearing them out. And that validates and gives a sense of belonging in a partnership. When someone does not feel heard, uh, such a person does not feel a vital part of the partnership or the relationship. So if you are always the one talking all the time and you don't want to listen and you don't come with a heart that says, look, I want to hear you out. I want to know how this is working with you and all that. Listening is a skill that has to be you know, cultivated and, and you, you can go online, Google listening skills and read through and all that. It will save your marriage. It will save your marriage uh, and to save your partnerships. So I want to encourage you to please make up your mind that this season of your life, you're going to develop listening skills so that you can save your relationship. Final word, brother. Um, final word, um, communication. We can't talk about it um, enough. Um, but as hurtful sometimes as your communication can be right now, I promise, I promise, if you'll engage it in a healthy way, you can get on the pathway of healing and wholeness. Yeah, you can get on the pathway of healing and wholeness if you will choose to communicate better. Uh, make sure that your relationship, you don't want uh, um, uh, gossip that's talking to somebody else all the time rather than talking to the person you're dealing with. Make sure that you don't get you to, to malice, which is not talking to your partner or spouse for a long period of time just because you are hurt or something has gone wrong. 
address it, face it. Let there be open communication. It is the oxygen of the relationship. You don't want to suffocate your relationship to the point that it is uh, not working again. It lacks the power to make things happen. And a relationship that will uh, lead you to the fulfillment of your purpose has to be energized with communication all the time. Thank you for your listening attention. We'll be back on another episode of the Better Have uh, series. Uh, may your relationship and marriages be sweet. <laughs>